Hi guys, so this is a video response to me old mate Raz Tendo, the artist formerly known as Razmataz Raz, one of my Swedish mates, and he did a video asking the question, what are five items you'd save in a fire? And I've seen a lot of responses to these, and some really unusual responses, like a lot of items that I think that if there was a fire, I wouldn't be rushing into my game room to fetch them. So I kind of thought, if I'm going to answer this, it has to be five items that are absolutely irreplaceable in my collection, like they're one of a kind or they mean something sentimental to me. So um, I've come up with five items, hopefully you guys are going to enjoy it. This is kind of five irreplaceable items that I would save in a fire. So first one is, uh, it's a collector's edition for the PS3 randomly, but just because of one particular feature of this collector's edition means it is irreplaceable and that is uh, my Fallout New Vegas excuse, excuse the glare Fallout New Vegas collector's edition now the reason it is one of a kind is it is numbered number one of 6650 so definitely irreplaceable um, just completely by random I managed to get this number one and uh, I love my little Fallout shrine I've got my Fallout collector's editions there so to have number one is awesome definitely irreplaceable uh, the second one is a irreplaceable item because it is something from my childhood now those of you that watch regularly know that of all the things in this game room pretty much everything I've re-bought and I had it as a kid and I sold it don't have anything left. I've got some garbage pail kids uh, card sticker things that I had as a kid. But this is my only toy I kept from childhood, and that is this little Boba Fett on speeder bike. Obviously, Boba Fett didn't come on the speeder bike, it was uh, originally the Scout Troopers, but I kept this speeder and I kept this Boba Fett figure. And it just reminds me of childhood. I had a huge collection of these Star Wars figures as a kid and uh, sadly as you do sold them all off about 15 20 years ago but kept this one so he just sits up there in the game room and uh, it's a nice little reminder of those days so i would definitely rescue this because because it's from my childhood um, it means a lot to me yes i could rebuy the figure but it wouldn't be the same now third item is something that means a lot because it's a nice memory and it's a unique item for me and that is these behind me uh, you probably can't see very well but i will do some close-ups and everything and so that is my streets of rage and streets of rage 2 uh, records from data discs and they're in these little frames up here but they were signed by yuzo kashiro when i met him at fabric when he did a live set now for those of you that don't know the story um it was announced that Yuzo Koshiro was going to do a live set, a lots of the old Sega music, Streets of Rage, Shinobi and the like, at Fabric, and I love Fabric as a venue. I'm big into drum and bass, so I've been there many times, had many, many good nights there. Now, they uh, announced that a certain select number of people would be put into a raffle. So if you bought a ticket for the event, you'd be put in a hat. And if your name came out, then you would go to a pre-show event where you would watch an interview with Yuzo Koshiro and you would get to meet him. And, uh, you know, I got an email saying, sorry, you didn't get in. And I didn't expect to. So it was like, OK. But a few days before the event, Data Discs messaged me and said, hey, we put you on the guest list. And I'm eternally grateful to those guys for that because I got to sit in on the talk with Yuzo Koshiro, which was fascinating. And I got to meet him afterwards and he signed my two records. So they are definitely two of the most treasured items in this room and I would 100% save those in a fire. Now for the last two items of the five, I'm gonna flip the camera around because we're gonna to head to the other corner of the room. So here we go, the other corner. This is where I keep all my big box Amiga and PC games in this cabinet. But on top of this cabinet is one big box PC game that is definitely irreplaceable to me and similar to the last one, it kind of holds a treasured memory for me and I'll just grab it down for you and that is my big box Doom 2 and it's in this acrylic case here and the reason this is irreplaceable is it is signed by John Romero now most of the items in this room like I said I'll let them burn I can get them on insurance it's no bother but this one was signed by John Romero when I met him and it's a nice day a uh, nice memory of a nice day 
So during the day I went over to Sega Zombies house, Scott Brand, and we hung out and did some filming. We had lunch, really nice day. But in the evening we went to the Cambridge Computer Museum and we watched a talk from John Romero. Now afterwards we got to meet him and Scott had something for him to sign and I had my big box Doom 2. And I remember really vividly when I gave it to him, um, he was kind of eyeing it up. It is really nice condition. It, I know it is in an acrylic case, but the box is really minty. So John was admiring it and Brenda, his wife, Brenda Romero, who works in the industry as well, came over from the other side of the room and was like, wow, that's such nice condition. And John looked at her and said, yeah, and it's the 3.5 floppy, not the CD. And he did. He looked really chuffed that it was the floppy disk version. And I always kind of remember that really fondly. And he was really nice. Brenda was really nice. Great meeting them. But to get that signed was absolutely fantastic. So this, my signed Doom 2, would 100% be rescued in a fire. Now, last item on the list is something very special that is pretty much irreplaceable purely for the fact that I have never seen one before or since, um, so they're definitely not easy to come by. Now, if I just move out the way slightly, you can probably see the top of it here, and it is my original 1991 Monkey Island 2 shop sign, and I will show you some uh, close-ups again of that, and it's just hanging there under my uh, Day of the Tentacle poster there. But this shop sign was uh, given out to certain shops to promote the release of Monkey Island 2 on the Amiga back in the day. And uh, yeah, purely because they were kind of point of sales and they were in shops, not many of them seem to have lasted. I've never seen one for sale beyond the one I bought. And uh, very kindly, Cine Steve gave me the heads up on that. So I was super chuffed to get it. Monkey Island 2, absolutely one of my favorite games of all time. So to have an original kind of sign that went in the shops at the time is just absolutely fantastic. And it's got a few little uh, bits of wear and, and, and creases, but considering it's 29 years old, it's doing pretty well. So that was the five items in my collection that I would rescue in a fire. Now please do head down to the description and go and check out Raz Tendo's original video. Check out his channel, drop him a sub, say hello, tell him Pete sent you. He's a really, really nice guy. And uh, if you want to do your own video response to this, of course, then let me know and let Raz know. So thanks for watching, guys. Peace.